morning, in case you can't tell by my hair. Looking good. But this place is gorgeous. Halfway across the Dedic Trail, about halfway, pretty much bang on. Got, as you see right there behind me, got two little falls. The water is beautiful, it's crystal clear, it's pristine. Um, there's a little bit of a U-bend on the river here where it comes through. Yeah, so today uh, we're going to head up to our uh, reverse the Dedic Trail, out to McKilp's Bridge. Then after that, probably going to go up and have a look at Armstrong's track. So go a little bit further east than the northeast, not very far. Just to check it out, see what's up there. There's another trail that goes across on the ridge. Looking forward to exploring and weather should be good today. Um, tomorrow the weather is going to you know, become overcast and fortunately tomorrow is the day we go home. So it's not going to be over the world. So I've got to get as much in today as we can. Um, go from there. All right, check in later on. We're at the top of Mount Galantope and uh, just looking around, we're about 1200 metres high. We just come over up onto the top of the ridge and everything was just annihilated and burnt. I just thought I'd just stop here and give you guys a bit of a squeeze. Because, you know, look at it. It's pretty full on. There's nothing here, like only the undergrowth. Heaps of these yellow flowers, we've no idea what they are. Tall yellow flowers. But, um, yeah. Looks a little bit surreal, really. Only the undergrowth. This tree's probably never gonna grow again. They haven't grown now. I don't know what type of tree they are. I don't think they're a gum, they might be. Anyway, interesting. Well, the ferns are obviously good as well as the fire. Just stopped at uh, a random bit of a lookout at the McKillop's Bridge end of the Dedic Trail. And down there behind us, you could see the river and the bridge. Um, probably can't see it from where we are here, but it is definitely there. So it's a bit smoky out here. They must have had a fair bit of planned burning going on, I think. Uh, but yeah, the view's still good. We're uh, heading down, making our descent down to the bridge. And um, something that's interesting is that the trees here are across between the Australian pine and and the uh, gum trees. Not a hybrid, but this both. <laughs> so um, there's a few places 
which has seen similar things to this. Uh, South Australia is definitely one of them between the ranges. They have native pine and other gum trees come together. Um, nearly in New South Wales, but I've seen it in the southern end of New South Wales. But it's actually kind of cool. And if you didn't know uh, there were native pines, you would be thinking, where'd these come from? But there is such a thing. Okay, see so in front of us now, there's a lot of pine on the left. And right, there's more, but there's gum trees as well. It actually makes it a really good scenery for both trees. All right, so here I am. Get your history lesson ready for you. So 1931-32, the bridge was built. Uh, just 11 days before its official opening, that uh, another flood come through, three metres higher than the previous record high, and washed it away. Uh, so that was in no the 19th of January, 1934. So uh, then straight away they decided they'd rebuild it. So uh, they started uh, pulling all the old stuff apart the old pylons were right except for the centre one, so they had to replace the centre pylon. And they brought truckloads of steel in, um, and they welded it together and placed it on top of those pylons, and then built the bridge again on top of those, that structure. And you'll see that in the pictures that I've taken earlier, I'll point it out for you, that there's this triangle-shaped zigzaggy bits, which bring the bridge up higher. Uh, I think it's five metres higher, three metres higher, something like that. And then anyway, in... Uh, December 35, 1935, they opened the bridge again, officially. Um, 71, another flood come through, the same height as the previous one that flooded it away and washed it away, except this time it survived, so happy days. Here we are, the Kilts Bridge, finally made it. Wasn't too much of a difficult drive to get here. If you haven't been here, you've got to come. You're missing out. It's not that hard to get to. Great drive down the hill if you come from the other side, not from Bedick Trail, if you come down the main road. It's a bit scary, but worth it. Just go slow. But uh, have a look around. Why wouldn't you want to come here? We're currently at the uh, launching place for the canoes. So when you uh, come, make sure you come down this side, have a look, it's better views. We went down the other side to start, start of the walking trail, which isn't bad, but it's a bit nicer on this side. So there we have these round formations caused by water currents, very similar to what we've seen in South Australia on the Lara rocks. This is why made a comment that it was likely a result of uh, ocean currents when the desert was covered in water. 
there are different ways to get here. I'm pretty sure it's called McKillop's Road. Surprise, surprise. Um, coming from the west side, the Victoria side, um, that hill to come down is pretty full on. Uh, can't bring caravans or camp trailers down there. It's too tight. Don't try. Don't be one of those guys who try. Um, the, from the other side of camp, from the New South Wales side, I don't miss you at all. Um, but yeah, so great place to come. Um, it's all family friendly too, by the way. There's campgrounds and stuff here with all the facilities that you'd ever need. So uh, don't uh, hesitate to come down here and have a check it, check it out.